Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Many Tribes, One Kingdom. It's your good friend John here with today's video, and we are joined, as always, by our wonderful co-host. It's me, Dustin. And so Dustin has spent the past couple months doing some exciting things. And we're going to talk to him about that today. But before we get started on that, if you're new here, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you enjoy videos about the Bible and Christianity and the church of today. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Thanks for spending just a little bit of time with us. <laughs> so, Dustin, why don't you tell us the two events you were at, and then I'll start asking questions. So, the wonderful event down in Texas was called the National Seminar on Evangelism. <clears throat> which is when the Army, Salvation Army brings persons from all across the United States, from Hawaii, from as far as Hawaii up to Maine, come together at a single um, place, which this year was at Salvation Army's camp in Texas called Camp Pablo Zell, in which we discuss an important topic such as evangelism, because we feel like it's, an, it's, an, it's a topic that deserves a great amount of respect and having a uniform curriculum or a uniform event to address this problem the same way, <clears throat> rather than hoping that, or hoping through a new program that the, that the pastors will implement it the correct way. This will allow everyone to receive the same material and the same teaching. The second one I went to was called Fit for Mission. And by the way, that was by far amazing. This Fit for Mission was a family cell event in the Division of the Potomac, which is Maryland, West Virginia, Virginia, and D.C. <laughs> woo -woo. Um, and we come together just, so, well, we want to, the primary role of it is to celebrate family, to be together as a family of believers, and to be, a, to be together as a family, um, to be in communion with fellow believers, <clears throat> to help to unite this division, because some most of you probably don't know, or all of you may not know that the Potomac division is a brand new division that has seen this unity over the past couple of years, which is unfortunate. And one of this event is meant to bring us back together or bring us together, not forcefully, but to encourage us to work together as a brand new division. Um, yeah. And the other, it's actually this fit for mission was very similar and in it's a uh, secondary message as National Seminar on Evangelism, as I was addressing the need to reach out into the community to evangelize to a dying crowd, to bring the word of God to the people. All right. Thank you, Dustin. And that leads perfectly into my first couple of questions. So were there any special guest speakers at either event that you can remember that you'd like to tell us about? So at the National Seminar on Evangelism, the two that I can remember, it, did, it was it's terrible because I can't remember the last one because she was wonderful. Um, it was an officer from Australia. Um, but the first two, the first one was Greg Steer, who was who, who is an evangelist by nature and the leader of a, of a, a mission called There to Share, which is one, they actually, there's not a promotional, they're not paying me to do this, but there is curriculum to teach teens how to evangelize and that's ultimately his goal was to do create a curriculum and to teach leaders how to teach their students or the teenagers how to evangelize in the modern day how to talk about jesus with their friends having, having a simple conversation that doesn't take more than 10 minutes and the wonderful part about the curriculum that he offers as i was reading through it i felt like i was receiving something out of it so it doesn't seem like it's just meant for just teens and God is blessed to be understood by multiple generations. The second, the second person who came out through the week was Steve Carter. I know this is one of John, one of John's favorite guys. <laughs> right, John? Oh, was I supposed to react? Yes. Steve Carter. Oh. Yes. Yeah, Steve Carter's great, but like, I didn't want to interrupt you. Oh, it's all good. Well, I was asking for a response, John. Come on now. Pay attention. Pay attention. <laughs> anyway, I Steve Carter, um, he was good. He he brought a really good message. This is more of a message style to us. It's more of um, teaching the importance of evangelism, how it can be effective 
um, how to listen and pray for those God moments in our daily walk, you know, in our daily walks, that would you would see that it was only God's hand on it, like and saying, "Hey, God, I want to, you know, want an only God moment." And then later on that week, somebody comes up to you and you know starts banging on your door, saying, "Hey, I want to learn about Jesus," or not that, but. You know, they offer it, it's a moment where God provides somebody to you to minister to them and evangelize. Yeah. Now, a fifth for mission. I was like, did you have someone? Did you have something you want to say, John? No, no, no. I was actually going to just ask about fit for mission. <laughs> oh, for fit for mission, we had two wonderful speakers, one in our current divisional commander for the Potomac Division, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Alan Hoffer. Whoop, whoop. And knows that again, it's not a promotional thing. He is a wonderful speaker. Every time that I get the pleasure of hearing him speak, I can just hear the word of God flowing from him and me. Just the gravity of his tone and mm -hmm. the way he speaks, you can see that the Holy Spirit's working through him, speaking through him to the audience, and you can see the real passion for the gospel coming from his voice. The second one mirrors the first one. Um, and John knows this person because she was at our TYI. It's yeah, it's Jennifer Dink. Uh, she, if you haven't gotten a chance, she's not a Salvationist. However, she is associated with the Salvation Army. But to give you a little bit of her bio, she really she's a teacher, and she focused outside of her teaching role. She focuses on discipleship of young women um, to make sure to keep to teach them how to live holy lives as women of Christ, to be women of Christ. I mean, I can't really say it any better than that. Yeah. Um, in the true biblical, in, in as close to the biblical sense as possible. Um, yeah. When she taught this week, she you can just see the fire and the passion that she has for the gospel. And the time she comes, it's always, I guess, they have with Lieutenant Colonel Alan Hoffer. It's always a pleasure to see her because she, she really does mirror him. She's, Everything I said about Colonel Hoffer is the same thing I'm going to say about Jennifer Day, just a fire for the spirit. You can hear it in her voice, just the way she speaks. You're never going to fall asleep in one of her sermons. I promise you that. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry. I missed it now. <laughs> I told you she was going to be there. I forgot. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so let's focus on National Seminar for Evangelism for just a moment. Okay. And what's the biggest thing you picked out about evangelism during that week? Like, what was the biggest moment where the Holy Spirit kind of grabbed you and shook you? Evangelism is not difficult. There is such a thing okay. called easy evangelism. One thing I did grab, and well, one thing that the Holy Spirit told me is that there's little things that you can do to make changes in your life to where they, when people see God flowing through you, or you see examples of God within you or without you, uh, or sorry, outside of you, then it can create a provoking question from somebody who you may encounter. Little things that you say and the way you speak go a long way. Like a friend of mine uh, named Manu, he's from Hawaii. One thing he said to me, he says, whenever you give a response, you always say better than I deserve because when you're saying that, it's letting somebody else know that, well what, well, what did you really deserve? Did you deserve something worse? And then you go into explaining the gospel. You go into explaining what Jesus did for you. And it opens the door. And that's what that's one example of easy evangelism. Another one is getting a t-shirt. Um, just getting a t-shirt that says Jesus loves you. Um, or you know, something like that, as long as it's obviously biblically appropriate. Or many tribes, one kingdom. We'll, we'll get to that later. Um, <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Um, but getting stuff like that, you know, doing simple changes like that can mean a world of difference whenever you are evangelizing. Because it's, I know for me, I, I'm not a very, I'm not a very good communicator. I have a, a speech impediment, which I know that Christ will still use me because he used Moses through his speech impediment. Um, but that's an easy segue, as we like to call it, a segue into talking about Jesus. The other really big message is the one you're going to hear with every, every time you go into church. 
the need for the people to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But you're just going to learn, you're going to know this one thing. People do not have an attention span worth more than 10 minutes. So if you can crunch the entire gospel down in 10 minutes, do so. Or the entire story of the Bible in 10 minutes, do so. Use your testimony. There is power and worth in your testimony. Because that is it's just like the Bible, your testimony is God's story, God working through you, in you, changing who you were, making you into a new creation. Use that with your friends, your family, and with strangers. Don't be afraid. Again, from my friend Manu from Hawaii, he said, don't ever be afraid to share your gospel. So share your testimony. Wow. Actually, yeah, that is your gospel. <laughs> he didn't say gospel, he said your testimony. But anyways, thank you guys. <laughs> so was, I know with a lot of Salvation Army events, they pick a verse for the uh, for the event. Was there a verse for the National Seminar on Evangelism? Like, there was there a specific verse for you guys that week? I uh, do not remember if there was one. Wow, I feel so bad about that. Well, it's it's been a month since you were there, so I'll yeah. I'll, I don't, I'll I don't think there was like one particular verse that they focused on. I mean, was, I, there, I, I, so go ahead. was there any verse that spoke to you that week, though? Make disciples of all nations. That verse, uh, which is very Matthew, common verse whenever you're getting into evangelism. Matthew twenty eight nineteen, yeah. Yeah, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yep. Okay, so let's move on to Fit for Mission. We'll be back for the evangelism in just a moment. Don't ask me the verse for the weekend because I do not remember the verse for the weekend. Okay, that that deals with the first question. <laughs> <laughs> I have a terrible memory. I'm sorry. If you ask me to remember, you're, you're I will sit so, 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 this this weekend. What yeah. message? What me What message really spoke to you this week? And what is something you've brought home that you're going to implement into your life from Fit for Mission? The gravity of the situation of this world. Elaborate. I'm about ready to. <laughs> Just trying to get okay. my face together. Um, so when we take on the serious topic of evangelism addressing it with its with its appropriate gravity is the most important thing realize the audience you're speaking to realize that they are a person for think first they are a person in desperate need to hear the gospel when you start to think that way first it puts the love of god first it puts it puts that mind, it puts that back into your mind. Secondarily, and this should always be with you, and so it might probably will even come first. Have the love of God with you. Pray first. Seek the love of God first. Let the love of God flow through you. Be unfiltered with that love, because guess what? If you are being filtered, you are not really sharing the love of God. For the mm -hmm. love of God is unfiltered. It's going to go after every dark corner in your heart. Yeah. That's why you need to pray first with that, with that. But always, because whenever you're going into these situations, these are people who are battered and broken, who may be very opposed to hearing the gospel. Mm -hmm. Remember, their, their refusal to hear the gospel is not a loss to you. It's a loss to the kingdom. But it doesn't reflect badly on you. It may just not have been the time for them to hear the message. It may not, it just may not be the moment. So don't be defeated at the first moment of when you think you lost. So a lost a soul. There's always, um, there's, there's never, it's not always going to be the same result. Some cases it's going to be where you did fail and you need to recognize that. But other moments is God using you as a vessel to sort of hit that first chink in their armor or hit, you know, do put a dent in their armor first so that the next person come through can break through. Yeah. You know, that's what we need. You know, that's what you need to focus on. Don't focus on winning the battle. Don't focus on even winning the soul. Focus on make, being an effective person of Christ. Yeah. So I know that these events, you know, you're not in meetings the whole time. So tell us about your favorite memory from Fit for Mission that wasn't in one of the meetings. Um, I would have to say the opportunity to serve at the carnival, making popcorn 
it was really fun, except for the time I got burnt and by the grease. That was not fun. Carnival. Uh, yeah, we had a carnival on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> you missed it. Um, well, at least that, since you were there, I already had a clown. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. You're good. Uh, what was it? Spending time with a close friend of mine, uh, Angel, she, it was just a wonderful time to spend, just to spend time, because of course Caleb couldn't find Caleb, so I'm like, oh, I gotta hang out with, I'm gonna hang out with Angel because Caleb's not here, where we can't all three hang out together, let me make that clear, I'm out favoring my friends, <laughs> just spe- spending that time together with a friend of mine, it's, it was very um, encouraging, wonderful, and just hearing her story and how she's doing in her life, her and her, uh, in her relationship. Good, good. Yeah. And, and going back to the seminar on evangelism, what about that one? What about any favorite memory outside of the meetings there? Yeah, because I'm very saying there, there were a lot of meetings at National Seminar on Evangelism. We had three a day, John. Well, I'm not surprised. Except for like one day. Um, my favorite moment was going out on an, an assignment, which was for us to go to one of the local Salvation Armies and assist in one of their programs. The one we got got sent to, it was all oh, God's hand on it, was to the Waxahachie, Texas, Waxahachie Corps, located in Fort Worth, Texas. Try saying that three times fast. Don't try it. <laughs> um, this core is not, it's not a small core, it's not a big core, but it is a um, an average sized church for Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, and we got the opportunity to, to be with their back to school bash and engaging with the kids there, just being a light and then getting told when we get there, oh, you didn't have to be in uniform. Well, we got told we had, <laughs> always told we had to be in uniform for this event, for all these events. And we're like, okay, well, who missed this? I'm going to have a stern talking to. And it's funny because our national youth secretary is from the Waxahachie Corps. And lo and behold, who shows up? The national the national youth secretary shows up, and we just have a good time and evangelizing and speaking to these young kids, just offering like a fumble, even just being a reprieve for their parents, just seeing their kids having fun. I know it was probably it meant the world to them just to see their kids having fun for a moment in their life, and them just being able to sit back and not have to worry, having people there who will listen to their problems, and then afterwards that Texas sized uh, um, brisket. And chicken oh. was great. Uh, we stopped at a restaurant on the way back. The uh, core officer stopped and, you know, they, they paid for our dinner. And they just wanted to thank us for coming out. And it was wonderful. Like, it was a Texas meal. I was, I was enjoying myself. I'm like, I, was, I wasn't feeling too good. That, I wasn't feeling too good that day. Not sick or anything. But I guarantee you, I ate all, everything on my plate. <laughs> just eat breakfast and you're making me hungry. Oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> so I know we're running short on time, so I've just got a few more quick ones for you. Okay. So what was probably the worst thing that happened at either one? I think I know what your answer is going to be, but the worst thing that happened for you at either one. Mm-hmm. I can't think of anything. Wow. What about the, what about Oh, your- oh yeah. Oh, oh, okay. So. The, for the National Seminar on Evangelism, it didn't really happen during the event. It happened just just on my way getting there. I, we What I did was um, made arrangements with my pastor to stay at his house because his house is closer to the airport because we were I had to fly down to Texas. And we, we got in the car. We were, I'm all packed I'm in the car. I had my uniform on because I was told I had to fly down in uniform, even though I later found out you didn't have to be in uniform. And that was a fun part, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I wasn't in full. They did say we didn't have to wear our tunics. But anyways, I digress. Um, we're in a car, and I see a message that my flight was canceled. Mm. And I'm like, oh, you got to be joking. So I get to the airport, and there's this just big old freaking line in there just for that one flight. Because there was only one flight going down to Fort Worth, Texas that day from that airport, from Boulder Washington wow. International. And so we're starting to Fort Worth, uh, Texas, because we had to fly into Fort Worth, not Love Field. Because, so. anyways, um, and then I'm getting like 30 minutes. I'm, I'm gonna cry. I was standing in this line for at least an hour and a half, two hours. 
And I didn't get, you know, I barely made any headway. I finally get to the front of, you know, get towards the front of the line. And then, and then I get a message that there was a flight or a seat reserved on another flight, which was a connecting flight. And it was leaving out of Ronald Reagan. Now, and if you don't know, Ronald Reagan is near Washington, D.C., which was almost an hour away from where I was. So I contacted my pastor. He said, oh, yeah, I'll come by. I'll pick you up and take you right over. I was like, oh, great, thanks. Get there. My flight's not until 2 p.m. or 2.30. Uh, and then I connected the flight down to Greenville. And then from Greenville over um, to Fort Worth, Texas. I was initially supposed to, my way the original plan was, I was supposed to be one of the first groups to arrive at 10 a.m. I didn't arrive until 10 p.m. It was a wonderful opportunity because I got to meet the National Youth Secretary for the Salvation Army, who was a wonderful person. Um, got to meet that, but then I got known as that guy the whole weekend, so the whole week. Because I was like, yeah, you're that guy that was late. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't know. What it wasn't, they weren't being mean to me. It was just like, it was a matter of circumstance. It was, it was all, it was all fun. Yeah. Because whenever, I, whenever I would introduce myself, it's just like, oh, you're that guy that came in late. Oh, thanks. Like, I'm the only guy that came in. <laughs> but anyways, and then for fit for mission, nothing really bad happened. I can't really think of anything that was really bad that happened. Although me, I was rolling down the, uh, that steep hill was, not so no it's so much fun and oh, that someone, someone fun. making me hike up that hill i was about to beat somebody for that <laughs> you can you can thank angel for that one john our message as soon as we're done with the video <laughs> yeah. last thing i want to ask you and this is uh something i want you to really think about what is something you want to tell our subscribers from both events what is something you really want them to take to carry from here Evangelize. Reach this world for Christ. That's going to probably be a sounding drum or something that you're going to hear constantly from your pastors, but I'm being absolutely serious. If you're lost on a deserted island, how do you, if there's people deserted on an island, can they go out and find a rescuer? Or does a rescuer have to come find them? You, I want to be, you need to be that, you know, if God is using you as a rescuer, go and be that rescuer. Speak the gospel to them because the gospel is that life preserver. Rescue them from that island. I'm sure they do not want to stand on that island. Because guess what? That island is sinking. They need to be rescued. Because once yeah. the island sinks, they cannot be rescued. They'll be swallowed up by the city. Go out. Rescue people as many as you can according to the will of God on your life. Man, that's poetic. Yeah, I, I just thought of that too. Wow. Or Y'all say the, the Holy Spirit sent that to me. Or, yeah. You, you know what I mean? The Holy Spirit influenced <laughs> I got um, But yeah, take it very seriously because time is going to come where we're going to have to face account for not just our sins, for what our actions were, but also what our inactions were. Mm-hmm. And even if we do enter into the pearly gates, we still have to hear all our actions. Yeah. And the last thing I want to see, or the last thing I want to hear, is that and I know I pop, I know I will hear things that you know where I was inactive in certain points, but I want it to be a specific moment where it says you 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 picked up the race, you started running in the race again. You didn't let anything run you by. You you went out, you you spoke to gospel, you you know, you did this, you did this, you did this. Not to say that that's what I need to enter into the kingdom, but I want to hear the ever sweet words, not just well done, my good and faithful servant, but just the additional fact that I was a force for the kingdom to bring more people in, to get more people into the kingdom. That's that's the sweet words I do want to hear after that. Is that people were rescued because I was active in the mission, and I know that's what you want to hear too. I yeah. know that you, I know you don't want to hear that you failed in several moments of your life when you should have spoken up. Speak up. Don't speak truth to power, but speak truth to the gospel, or speak the truth of the gospel to these people because they need to hear it. It is a desperate need. It is medication. It is something that we need to hear. I think probably the best way to end this interview. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Thank you, John, for interviewing me for this. I really loved it. Um, 
Yeah, you really this uh, this is something I really needed today. <laughs> Woo. All right, guys. I am so thankful for you guys having me um, on the channel. This is not a farewell. This is me saying we're going to keep on moving forward. And hopefully um, we'll have more videos. Uh, I do ask and solicit your prayers as there will be some upcoming changes in me in my life personally that I do ask that you pray for. I can't speak to them yet because they haven't really happened. I don't want to um, ruin anything, but just please be in prayer. Thank you, guys. God bless you all.